Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sitting here at the Berlin Foreign Policy Forum of the Kerber Foundation. I am very pleased to have with me Jean-Marie Guenno, former Deputy Secretary General of the United Nations and now President and CEO of the Crisis Group in Brussels. My name is Bastian Benrad, I'm from the German School of Journalism. And we just go uh, right into the first question. You are on a panel for reviewing German foreign, foreign policy. Um, we had a call from our President Gauck who said Germany should widen its efforts in foreign policy, should take more responsibility. Do you agree on that? I very much agree. I mean, Germany is a very important country at the center of Europe. And Europe, uh, as a group of nations that aspire to the same ideals, cannot be effective in uh, shaping its environment without a very active role of Germany. Things changed 25 years ago when the, when the wall fell. And since then, I think Germany has been in a process of adaptation. Uh, and I believe this process of adaptation is now going to, to accelerate because we see that the world has become a much more complicated place, uh, that security doesn't start at the border. You see uh, um, weak countries becoming safe havens for terrorism. We see it in the Middle East. We saw it in Afghanistan. Uh, if you just wait for those threats to come uh, to your country, it's often too late. So it's very important to, to work on shaping one's environment. Right. You Let's stay on this topic. You recently said that just bombing the Islamic State IS is not enough. You said you're missing, we're missing a strategy. What kind of strategy do you have in mind there? Well, I think there's often too much emphasis on the military dimension of strategy. I think the military dimension is important, but it has to be part of a political strategy. And you mentioned what I said on the Islamic State. Uh, clearly, the reason why the Islamic State is recruiting so many people is that there are lots of Arab Sunnis who feel disenfranchised and they look at what other nations do and they feel that Western nations um, are only focus on the plight of minorities. When Yazidis, when Kurds, when Christians are under attack, they react. That perception of double standards is feeding the kind of extremism that you see with the Islamic State. So it's Can you mention an example of double standards? Well, double standards is when you see uh, suburbs being bombed in uh, Damascus or Homs and you don't make much uh, noise about it. Uh, that's that's, a, that's a, sadly a very good example of uh, double standard. And it's, And it's noticed in, uh, in uh, Arab uh, Sunni uh, uh, places. Right, okay. In your, in your term as Deputy uh, General Secretary of the United Nations, you oversaw a large expansion of uh, UN peacekeeping. Um, do you think, even today, UN peacekeeping st can still be successful with major nations blocking each other in the Security Council? Well, surprisingly, um, in spite of the deep div divisions in the Security Council over Syria, over Ukraine, between Russia uh, and China on one side and uh, uh, three permanent Western members of the Council on the other side, um, the Security Council has not been paralyzed, for instance, in authorizing new missions in Africa, uh, like the Mali, Central African Republic. So. The Security Council has big problems today. I'm worried they could get worse, but it's not yet been paralyzed. Okay. I thank you very much for this interview. Have a great day at the conference today. Thank you. Thank you.